Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a slasher film, Madhouse. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a mental facility. The voice of a young boy laughing hysterically could be heard in every direction of the building. Furthermore, scary figures flash into the scene out of nowhere. It is revealed that these creatures are haunting the young boy's mind. Stressing about the figures, the young boy cannot contain himself and panics. To escape from his nightmares, the young boy breaks the window and escapes from the asylum. He runs for his life without looking back to the place that tortured him all his life. The young boy goes to the forest to avoid the mental facility staff chasing after him. The scene continues as the staff repeatedly uses all their remaining energy to fetch the young boy back. Unfortunately, just as the young boy is about to escape, he sees a car in the middle of the road. Without hesitation, the car accelerates and runs over the poor boy, killing him without mercy. The driver gets out of the car, but does not feel remorse about what he did. After the tragedy, the scene transitions to a small town. A psychiatric student named Clark arrives at the Cunningham Hall mental facility to train before graduating. He goes straight forward to the entrance to introduce himself. Soon after, he goes to the reception to look for a man named Dr. Franks. Unfortunately, there is not a single person in the reception. Being impatient, Clark forces his way inside the asylum. After he opens the door, he's immediately greeted by the patients. Hopeless, Clark asks one of the patients where he could find Dr. Franks. The patient reacts aggressively and puts her hands on Clark's chest, threatening him. Fortunately, an assistant doctor comes and ends the commotion. The assistant welcomes Clark to the asylum. Soon after, a red-haired staff member comes and welcomes Clark into the facility. They exchange greetings rather than hormones before heading to the admin office for the paperwork. Also, the staff gives Clark keys and a walkie-talkie and proceeds to Dr. Frank's. On the way to the doctor, Clark and the staff are startled by a beardy patient, specifically his messy beard. Patient Beardy says that he does not belong to the asylum. He also says that the facility does not let the patients be freed, even though they are already better. Patient Beardy claims that the people who run the facility are the crazy ones. Ending the commotion, the staff escorts Patient Beardy away. Finally, both of them arrive at Dr. Frank's office. While waiting, Clark inspects the office. To his curiosity, he finds a very strange book entitled Psychology and the Paranormal. He grabs the book quickly and skims through it. Suddenly, Dr. Franks appears in the scene. He approaches Clark with warm greetings. However, as soon as Clark feels comfortable, Doctor warns him that he is not in a summer camp and should take the internship very seriously. Two more doctors come to the office and introduce themselves. The old doctor claims that he had worked with Clark's grandfather in the old days. Dr. Franks tells Clark he should meet one of the nurses named Sarah for the grand tour. Soon after, Clark and Sarah meet and exchange greetings, but still not hormones. Sarah says that Dr. Franks is strict and advises Clark to work hard and just follow orders. Before touring, the scene focuses on a patient named Alice. Alice stares out the window and sees a creepy-looking boy. The scene continues as Sarah tours Clark in the facility. In the corridor, both of them are greeted by the head nurse. As head nurse welcomes Clark, she asks Sarah to talk in the office privately. Then, an old patient approaches Clark and says something about a figure lingering in the facility for months. Soon after, Sarah comes back to continue the tour. She introduces the Madhouse, a place in the facility where high-security patients reside. Clark is perplexed as he witnesses the Madhouse as a very scary place. Sarah introduces each high-security patient to Clark, each with different diagnosed mental health illnesses. Suddenly, one of the patients attacks Clark with a sharp glass. To ask for help, Sarah alarms the security guard to come after them. With such speed, the security guard beats the patient using his stick. With the commotion, they all decide to leave the madhouse for good. Next, Clark goes to his room to rest. Suddenly, he sees a young boy randomly lingering. To learn more, Clark asks the young boy to introduce himself. However, the young boy disappears like a bubble without traces of his body smell. Clark goes out to check on the commotion he heard on the walkie-talkie. He witnesses head nurse physically abusing Alice for refusing to take her medications. Alice is saying something about a figure disturbing her sleep. Luckily, patient Beardy comes to the scene and saves Alice from the abuse of head nurse. Again while strolling around, Clark sees the young boy out of nowhere. As a reaction, Clark chases after him, but the young boy runs as fast as he can. Clark is perplexed, as he cannot understand how the young boy keeps disappearing like a bubble whenever he confronts him. Clark attempts to find the young boy in the madhouse. Rather than finding the young boy, he is greeted by the old doctor. He says that he did not see a young boy come to the madhouse. So Clark asks the old doctor about the noise he has heard at the facility. The old doctor then recalls the saddest patient he encountered on cell 44. 
He says the patient escaped by jumping out of the building and died. However, the old doctor believes that he still lingers in the building, which indicates that the noise Clark has been hearing could be from that same patient. Because of the commotion last night, Dr. Franks calls Clark to his office. He says that he does not like Clark lingering in the madhouse in the middle of the night without any reason. Clark argues that the facility is understaffed and broken. He also mentions the patient that escaped cell 44. However, Dr. Franks only dismisses everything Clark said. He offers that if Clark abides by the rules, he will consider listening to his suggestions next time. When Clark leaves the office, he hears Dr. Franks and head nurse arguing. In the evening, Sarah and head nurse hear something outside. Head nurse grabs her taser and goes out to check on it. However, tragedy comes when a cloaked figure appears behind head nurse and attacks her suddenly. Then, the figure brings and locks her into a room. Fearing for her life, head nurse screams at the top of her chicken lungs. However, her chicken voice suddenly stops when the figure electrocutes her to death using a defibrillator. After finding out about the murder, all the staff mourns the death of head nurse. Dr. Franks assigns every person an area to conduct interviews about the murder. He assigns Clark to the madhouse. After interviewing some patients, Clark could still not get any leads. Continuing the interviews, Clark talks to a certain patient in cell 44. Clark cannot see the patient's face because he is sitting in the dark. However, the patient says that the killer of head nurse could be on the top of the food chain, implying Dr. Franks. The following day, Clark asks the nurse in charge of medications about the madhouse. However, the nurse does not give any help. She only says that everyone in the madhouse takes the same medication. Clark describes the person in cell 44 to Sarah. Sarah says that he should not take the opinions of mentally ill people too seriously. But Clark says that he heard Dr. Franks and head nurse had a massive fight recently, so he believes that the claim of the person in cell 44 could be true. Sarah does not buy it because she believes the patients are delusional. In the next scene, Clark has a heart-to-heart -heart talk with patient Beardy. Clark believes that patient Beardy does not belong in the asylum anymore because he is better already. However, Beardy says that he would not be able to leave the asylum alive. Later, Clark and Sarah meet with some of the patients. She asks Alice why she's feeling scared all the time. Alice says she has been seeing a ghost for quite some time now, and it would not leave her no matter what she does. She describes the ghost as a young boy that runs through the facility at night. This reveals that it is the same boy that Clark has been seeing. The following day, Clark returns to cell 44 to talk with the same person. The person introduces himself as Ben, and he says something about a young boy lingering. Although Clark wants to continue the conversation, he needs to go as he has other things to do. Next, Clark eats lunch with Sarah. Sarah confides that she has been diagnosed with minor schizophrenia, which is why she has taken the same medication as the patients in the madhouse. However, Clark wonders why Sarah's medication is in a different color. Suddenly, they hear a loud noise outside the dining area. Upon checking it, they witness that patient Beardy hangs himself to death, but not using his long beard. Alice then says that suicide is the only way out of the asylum. Clark rushes to the nurse in charge of medication and asks what medication was taken by patient Beardy. Upon realizing that it is the same medication as the patients in the madhouse, Clark goes into the basement again. Clark goes back to cell 44 to talk with Ben again. He asks Ben if he takes the same medication as the other patient. Ben says he doesn't like taking the medication because he knows it does not really help him. He claims that the medication the asylum is giving makes the patients crazier. In the next scene, Clark and Sarah sneak into the medication room to check the controversial pills. They quickly grab some samples and get out as fast as possible. Clark says he will send the samples to his colleague at the university to examine them. He theorizes that the mental facility is giving suspicious medications to its patients. In the next scene, Clark sees the young boy again in his window. He is perplexed as he sees the young boy floating by himself. Later, he sneaks into Dr. Frank's office with Sarah to read the doctor's books about psychology and the paranormal. At this point, Clark is convinced that something paranormal is haunting the facility. Suddenly, the police arrest the security guard for the murder of head nurse. Meanwhile, the young boy appears again out of nowhere. Clark asks him his name. However, the young boy only laughs in a chicken voice, but the ghost disappears when the phone rings. Clark then picks the phone up and realizes it is his university colleague. His colleague says that he did not find anything suspicious in the pills, but it is only a placebo and had no effects. With it, he goes back to Ben to talk about it. He realizes that Ben is right and the pills do not help the patients. Clark plans to call the boards and expose all the atrocities the mental facility commits against its patients. He also tells Ben that he does not think the security guard murdered head nurse. He theorizes that Dr. Franks has something to do with it. Amazed by Ben's knowledge, Clark asks him if he knows something about the ghost boy. 
However, Ben advises him to go back upstairs as he still has work. In the next scene, Clark and Sarah look into the patient's records. They realize that since Dr. Franks took charge of the facility, none of the patients was released. This reveals that Clark's theory could be right that Dr. Franks is keeping the patients unhealthy, so they could not get out of the facility, meaning more profit. However, Clark is perplexed when he sees Ben's record in the books. The book says that Ben was already dead many years ago. He tells Sarah that it is false, because he just talked with Ben earlier in the morning. After that, they share some romantic time to break the stress. In the next scene, the old doctor goes to the kitchen to cook himself some food. However, the same cloaked figure that killed head nurse appears to flex its mysterious muscles. The figure attacks and kills the old doctor using an axe, causing him to fall to the ground, all bloody and lifeless. Back to Clark and Sarah, Sarah suddenly has a mental episode, so Clark gives her medications to calm her down. Sarah says she is having difficulties distinguishing a dream from reality. The following day, Clark hears on the radio that the security guard escaped custody. Also, the facility learns about the death of the old doctor. Clark rushes to Dr. Frank's office to talk to him. However, he realizes that the door is locked. He pushes the door with all his power, but he cannot open it. Sarah suddenly comes to the scene and says that the security guard is not the murderer. She says that the police have already captured the security guard again in a different area. Because of all the tragedy, Clark and Sarah plan to escape the facility. Sarah insists they should rest for a little while before leaving, and she drugs Clark's coffee to make him fall asleep. Clark is convinced that a ghost is making all the killings, but Sarah says it is impossible. Soon after, Clark cannot resist the drugs and falls asleep. The young boy then visits him in his dream. The boy says the answer to who is making all the killings is right in front of Clark's eyes. Then, Clark has a revelation that Sarah is the real killer as he remembers that she has been diagnosed with schizophrenia. So he confronts Sarah and asks why she drugged him, claiming that he knows that she is the one who made all the killings because Ben had told him that she is the killer. This reveals that the young ghost boy who had been appearing all the time is actually Ben, who escaped cell 44 and died. It also reveals that the person Clark is talking to in cell 44 is Ben's ghost. Moreover, Sarah says there is no one in cell 44, which is only used as a storage room. To make sure he's not crazy, Clark then goes to the madhouse to approach Ben. He asks Ben to reveal his face, and Ben transforms into the same ghost young boy. But after a while, Ben also transforms into Clark himself. This finally reveals that Clark is Ben himself, the kid who died after attempting to escape many years ago. It is also exposed that Clark, or Ben himself, was behind all the murders. In the next scene, Sarah reads a letter pertaining to Clark. It says that Clark, the medical student, is dead and will not continue the internship. This reveals that Ben only used the body of Clark to impersonate him and infiltrate the mental facility. In fact, Sarah realizes that Ben was diagnosed with multiple personality disorder, implying Ben's multiple personalities as the young boy, Clark, and the cell 44 patient. Next, Ben confronts Dr. Franks with an axe. He reveals himself as Ben and comes back for revenge. Without hesitation, he swings his axe and kills Dr. Franks brutally. It turns out, Dr. Franks was the one who killed Ben when he was a kid. Sarah comes later and knocks Ben out. However, it is ineffective as Ben quickly recovers and chases after her. Sarah pleads for her life and says she is willing to help Ben. After Ben shows vulnerability, Sarah steals the axe and swings it to Ben's arm, making him fall. To retaliate, Ben trips Sarah, takes his axe, and kills Sarah brutally. The scene fades away as Ben goes to another mental facility to inflict another terror again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.